beach. You know my favorite thing to do at the beach? Fly a kite! Oh my goodness! I love it! Running along the beach with a kite flying behind me? It's my absolute favorite! My parents have been promising we will go to the beach and fly kites all summer. And now, it's happening! I need your help packing for this trip to the beach. Will you help me? Awesome! Okay, I'm going to the beach. Should I take sunglasses or snow goggles? Oh yeah, right! Of course! Sunglasses, because it's gonna be sunny, not snowy. Got it. Okay, should I take my kite or should I take this puzzle? Yeah, because I'm gonna fly my kite. I guess I could put a puzzle together, but I'd lose the pieces in the sand. Okay, last one. Should I take my bathing suit? Or should I take my lion costume? Roar! Yeah, of course! Because I'm gonna be swimming! Ugh, it wouldn't be very fun to swim in my lion costume. Blub, blub, roar! Blub, blub! No! Okay, thanks for helping, friends. I think I'm ready to go. Callie! Yeah, Mom! Be right there! I'll be right back, friends. Well, guess what, friends? No kite flying at the beach for Callie. It looks like bad weather made my parents cancel our trip. Oh, my day is ruined! I wanted to go to the beach and fly a kite so bad. And my parents promised. A promise is something that helps someone be sure you're going to do something you said you would. My parents promised we would go to the beach and fly kites. I've always been able to count on my parents' promises before. Do you think I still can? Let's check out our Bible story for today. Maybe it will help. It's time for today's Bible story. It comes from... The Book of 2 Kings, Chapter 4 One day, Elisha was visiting a village, and a couple, a wife and her husband, invited him to come over for a meal at their home. They were very nice to Elisha. In fact, so nice that they built a room under their home just for him. It was a room he could stay in whenever he came to town. Elisha was very thankful and wanted to do something for the couple in return. They had everything they needed, except they had never been able to have children. Elisha promised that in a year, they would have a son. And they did. But one day, when the son got a little older, he became very sick and died. His mother was very, very sad. She went directly to Elisha and told him what had happened. Elisha was sad as well because he had made her a promise, and he knew that when he made a promise, it was actually God's promise, and God keeps his promises. He went with the boy's mother and prayed to God that the child would come back to life. And he did! God used Elisha to bring the boy back to life, and the family was overjoyed. The boy's mother learned that day that I can count on God's promises. Hey friends, I know, I'm here. My parents didn't cancel the trip for good. They just rescheduled it for a time when the weather would be better. I'm sure glad they did because this is perfect beach kite flying weather. I'm glad I know that I can still count on my parents' promises. Even when things don't work out the way they planned, I know my mom and dad always want the best for me. Can you imagine flying a kite when it's raining and windy? Not fun at all. And kind of dangerous too. And what we learned from the Bible story today is that we can definitely count on God's promises. I can count on God's promises. Don't forget that, friends. I will see you all next time. Thanks 
for learning and growing with me. Woohoo! Hi there, little chicken nuggets. It's me, Coral. And boy, oh boy, do I have a surprise for you. Well, welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grow TV. Well, hello and howdy do. Whoa, isn't it a beautiful day for learning? Laughing and loving other people? Well, that's my plan today, at least. Well, let's just say part of my day. You probably noticed a couple of things different about me today. <laughs> no, it's not a new sweater. No, I did not part my hair on a different side. I'll give you a hint. I'm standing inside of it. No, not my shoes, the basket. I'm standing inside of a basket. And do you know what this basket is connected to? Yes, that's right, a hot air balloon. Good guess. I'm in a hot air balloon because one, I've never been in one. And two, I've heard people say that you think better in a higher altitude, so I figured I'd give it a go. But first, it's time for our segment, Hot Air Balloon Fun Spectacular Facts. And a lot of you are probably wondering, hey Carl, what is the fun f the hot air balloon spectacular fact that you have? Which is a great question and I'm happy to answer it. It's the part of the show where I tell you fun facts about hot air balloons in a spectacular way. And when I say spectacular way, that just means I'm going to say these facts with some fun music in the background. Ready? Let's get started! Fun fact number one! The first people to ride in a hot air balloon weren't even people. That's right, the first hot air balloon to take flight in the 18th century was ridden by a sheep, a rooster, and a duck. Isn't that wild? What do you think they talked about while they were up there? Probably talking about the geese. They're always up to no good. Anywho, fun fact number two. Apparently hot air balloons cannot fly in the rain, which is a total bummer because I was planning a hot air balloon thunderstorm watch for my birthday party. But now I have to do something else. And finally, fun fact number three. Hot air balloons have the ability to take all the fear inside your body and make it disappear. Isn't that amazing? My friend Two Toes Tommy told me that yesterday. And I believe everything he says because the man has two toes. A guy like that has to know what he's talking about, right? Hey Carl, you know you have two toes as well, right? I do have two toes? I guess I do have two toes. And a lot of other people do. A lot of other people have two toes? Well then why do they call him Two Toes Tommy then? I'm confused. Anyways, Tommy promised me that that was true. That if I got in a hot air balloon, all my fear would just go away. And I love that fact because you know what? Heights aren't really my thing. Well, it's time to take off and I'll touch base with you here in a minute. Um, y'all, I may have made a miscalculation because as you can see, I'm in a hot air balloon and I am also in the sky. And guess what? <laughs> I'm scared. I'm scared and I need help. Hey Carl, whoa, are you in a hot air balloon? Yes, now please. How cool. Did you know the first people in a hot air balloon weren't even human? It was- A sheep, a rooster, and a duck. Yes, I know, now how to get down. All right, just take a deep breath. How did this happen anyway? Well, I'm wanting to discover what's up in the air more. And my friend promised me that you don't feel fear in a hot air balloon, but he was wrong. Oh, okay. Wait, was your friend who told you that Two Toes Tommy? Sure was, why? Oh, Carl. Two Toes Tommy is notorious for not telling the truth. He loves pulling pranks on people. Are you serious? Yup. I don't even know why we call him Two Toes Tommy. All I know is he's not someone you can really count on. Buckets of berries! I can't believe I fell for that! You can't trust anyone who makes a promise these days. Well, I wouldn't go that far. I think there's someone you can still trust on keeping their promises. Oh yeah? Who? Well, let's go back to 2 Kings chapter 4. Do we have to? I mean, I could leave. No, 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 please don't go. I'll do the story with you. <laughs> okay. Well, the story starts off with this woman who lived in Shunem. Now, her and her husband were pretty wealthy. They had a big, big house. With lots and lots of food? Yep. And they were very fond of the prophet Elisha. So much that they had built a nice room just for him, for whenever he was visiting or passing through. They had everything they could ever want, except for one thing. 
hot air balloon? They could have mine. Nope. A child. Without one, her family legacy would end with her and her husband, who was much older. Now, Elisha wanted to return the kindness that they had shown to him. So when he had found out she wanted a child, he told her that this time next year, she would be pregnant with a son. How cool, what was her reaction? Well, you could tell she was excited, but also very nervous because she didn't know how it was possible. She was afraid of getting her hopes up. <laughs> yeah, I know how that feels. I hate being disappointed. Me too. But Elisha wasn't lying. A year had passed and she gave birth to a baby boy. What a miracle! But disaster struck one day. When the boy had grown a little, one day he wasn't feeling well. His family tried to make him feel better, but nothing worked. And he ended up dying. What? Katie, I don't know if anyone told you this, but this is not the way to make someone feel better who's scared to death of being in a hot air balloon. Hang on, Carl. The story isn't finished. Almost immediately, the mother knew what she had to do. She had to go find Elisha and ask him to bring her son back to life. So she traveled to him and told him what had happened. What do you do? Takes it too bad, too sad, like the two toes Tommy's just texted me? Nope, the opposite. He went back with the mother to their house, went into the room where the boy was, shut the door, and he began to pray. He kept praying and trusting God. He prayed and prayed and asked God to heal the boy. And the boy began to breathe once again. Get out, he brought the boy back to life? He sure did. The mother came in and thanked Elisha for what he had done. And guess what, Carl? Huh. I tell you that story, not only because it's great and wonderful, but because it teaches us a very special thing. We may not be able to trust everyone, but we can always count on God's promises. You know what, Katie? You're right. I don't know why I got so worked up earlier. I can't remember a time in my life where God's gone back on a promise or disappointed me. Exactly. There are thousands of promises from God in the Bible and so many stories of others trusting in those promises. And there are people in our lives today, like parents and friends, who trust the promises of God and find out that they are always true. <laughs> Amen to that. High five. Oh. Wow. I tell you what. Out of all the big ideas in the universe, this one, much like a hot air balloon, is probably the most uplifting. And it's this, I can count on God's promises. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. One, two, three. I can count on God's promises. Great job, kids. Now, don't forget to tune in next week for the newest episode of Grow TV, okay? All right. I'll see you later. Bye. Thank you for watching, and tune in next week for a new episode of Grow TV. Colossians 3, verse 2. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things.